invite everybody to come join us today on this foggy kind of English countryside day to unbox our Mark 14 Spitfire. Alright everybody, Paul Stetswitz here with Weeks Aircraft with a Mechanics Corner. Not an update on the 108, something completely different. Uh, we are going to unbox our Mark 14 Spitfire. Now about a year and a half ago we had a, a large amount of containers, about, I think it's about 9 or 10 containers actually that were stacked outside our facility that had various airplanes in them, including our Lancaster components projects, um, the P-47 Thunderbolt, the Italian Nardi 305, um, and the Yak 9P uh, Russian fighter and the Mark 14 Spitfire. Now, of course, you've seen in past posts that we unboxed the P 47 because we had to take it out of their container it was in bad shape. And also, the Nardi was taken out and put on display. So, those, both those airplanes are actually on display at the museum. Um, but after taking a closer look at some of the other containers, we realized that the Spitfire container and the Yak-9 also had issues leaking moisture in a container, so we decided to pull those out. The Yak-9 has actually been taken out of the container already. That's been finished, but the next airplane we had to deal with was the Mark 14 Spitfire. There was a lot of components that were kind of stacked up in front of it. We've removed all that, inventoried the parts, boxed everything up. All that's left is the fuselage and the wing. And the good thing is the fuselage and the wing are on this beautiful shipping stand with the wheels. So all we have to do is just hook a tug onto it and pull it out of the container. So come see what we're doing. I don't know, we're gonna, I'm just gonna pull it out. Okay. And I'm not sure what's gonna happen once it gets past this lip. It's not gonna flop down, but at some point it may want to. Now I have the big forklift with a a hook and a strap. We can actually, if I get it out to a certain point, we can strap onto that where it V's up. And after, if we have to pick it up to continue out with it, but the problem with that is, and I can't trap the forklift because the further back I go, then I can't get the forklift down. Yeah. So I'm hoping actually we can just get it out just by pulling it out all the way to a point and then. We'll and I hope it's not going to get hung up on one of these. It, sh it, it was designed to go in there. So it should come right. I already started moving it. I moved it like three feet already. And it rolls right out of there. Okay. Why don't you just reconnect so that you're pulling over this way with that? Just reconnect so that you're pulling at an angle. No, it's hung up on this corner right here. We have to somehow move it that way. Let's see if I can yank it over. It's not much. It's like an eight head inch. All right.
have to pick it up because of that. Yeah, it's hung up there. It's hung up. Let me get the fork. that it dropped down like that. I would have thought that it would have gone up for Well, it's hung up on something right now. I, I think I see it, it's laying flat now, okay? So the actual structure is actually laying flat on the floor. So go ahead and pull it. About that. It's like stuck, stuck. Wheels are just spinning. Yeah. That ain't budging. Lift it up on that side again. Same thing. Yeah. Let's get it to where it just falls through that hole. So where I'm and then we can pick it up again. Up. All right. Yeah, we got to do the same thing. I think. I think I'll just pull out and let it drop. Yeah, I think it'll be. Yeah, fine. I think it's going to be fine. It's going to make a noise. <laughs> let me let me get it out a little ways, Ken. <laughs> so I can push that fork out again. So that way it slides on that fork again. Alright, that should be fine. We gotta get some ice on these things.
Alright, well at least it's out. It's too far that one. Yeah. But we can pick it up. All right, so we got the uh, entire rig out of the container. Uh, it went fairly well. It would have went better if the floor wasn't rotten and the wheels wouldn't have fallen through the hole in the floor. <laughs> that kind of slowed us down a little bit, but we did get it out. But I want to mention the stand that was built for this, uh, for this airplane. One of the problems you have when you're shipping an airplane overseas or in a shipping container like this, especially a large airplane like a Spitfire with a big wing, is that the wing is normally too tall vertically to go into the container, so that it has to be shipped with the wing at an angle as you see it. Well, somebody really thought this stand out, and they designed it to where you can actually put the wing in to the stand vertically, and then once that's done, you can actually take the whole wing, and it's on a pivot point here, and the whole thing folds over that way making the wing small enough this way, of course, to get into the container. Ingenious, whoever built this stand. This is one of the nicest shipping container stands I've actually ever seen. Um, but as you can see, uh, it traveled well. There's no damage to the airplane. And the fuselage is on the other side. Let's go check that out. On this side of the shipping stand is the fuselage. And again, this is all contained as one unit. It's bolted to the stand very nicely. And you can see the Spitfire Mark 14. It's actually one of the larger Spitfires. It's a later variation. And the biggest the thing that kind of makes it stand out is that it's Griffin powered with a five-bladed propeller. Uh, so it's it's quite the thing. We actually have the engine. Um, that's ha we're actually building a new stand for the engine because the stand that it was on was all rusty and almost falling apart. And the prop also had to have a stand made for it. And eventually all that's going to be uh, placed inside of here and into better storage. So we're happy with it. Uh, the airplane was not doing well in the shipping container just because of humidity and there were several roof leaks in this container so there was moisture getting in. Uh, but it's all out. It's all been taken care of. Everything boxed up and it's going to be safe now. Get back on that side. That way, it only has to go over like a foot. Is Eric on that? He's on the front. He's gonna get on the... I think we need everybody back here. Kind of that. It doesn't steer, so it doesn't have to be easier to pull. Hold on. Yeah. Just need a lot of meat. Um, can 
I get I can't do anything with the forklift. It's too far out. Everybody, mission accomplished. Uh, Spitfire 14 out of the container. Uh, container unload and load is probably the least things that I enjoy doing <laughs> with old airplanes. And it's actually there's only one thing worse than taking a container, an uh, airplane out of a container, and that's putting an airplane into a container. But everything went pretty good. Uh, we got the tail out. Uh, had a nice little stand made for it. That's inside. All we have left is the propeller uh, to come back over. And uh, that's it. Spitfire 14 is back in storage in a much safer environment. And we're next we're going to move on to try to sort out some of the Lancaster components and get those out of the container. So uh, maybe we'll do a short little video on that sometime. So thanks for joining us.